independence. That sounds interesting. Hmm, by Thomas Jefferson, Mark Twain, Dr. Seuss, and Charles Bernard Bartholomew Susie and Safari Olson. When, in the course of turtle events, it becomes necessary for a turtle, no matter how small, to dissolve the political bands which have connected her with a government, no matter how large, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which she is entitled a decent respect to the opinions of turtle kind requires that she declare the causes which impel her to the separation. On the faraway island of Salamasand, Yernal the turtle was king of the pond. A nice little pond. It was clean. It was neat. The water was warm. There was plenty to eat. The turtles had everything turtles might need. And they were all happy, quite happy indeed. <laughs> they were until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see. But I don't see enough. That's the trouble with me. With this stone for a throne, I look down on my pond, but I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king. I'd be ruler of all I could see. So, Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand, and Yertle the Turtle King gave a command. He ordered nine turtles to swim to his stone, and using these turtles, he built a new throne. He made each turtle stand on another one's back, and he piled them all up in a nine turtle stack. And then Yertle climbed up, he sat down on the pile, what a wonderful view. He could see most a mile. Oh, mine, Yertle cried. Oh, the things I now rule. I'm king of a cow, and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house, and what's more beyond that, I'm king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle. Oh, marvelous me. For I am the ruler of all that I see. And all through that morning he sat there up high, saying over and over, A great king am I. Until long about noon, then he heard a faint sigh. What's that? snapped the king, and he looked down the stack, and he saw at the bottom turtle named Mac, just a part of his throne. And that plain little turtle looked up and she said, beg your pardon, King Yertle, I've pains in my back and my shoulders and knees. How long must we stand here, your majesty, please? Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be abolished for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that turtle kind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to abolish the governments to which we are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object 
evinces a design to re reduce us under absolute despotism. It is our right, it is our duty to abolish such government. Such has been my patient sufferance, and such is now my necessity. The history of the federal government of the United States of America is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. Our federal government has erected a multitude of offices and sent forth swarms of officers to harass our turtles and eat out their substance. Our federal government has created a large and unknown number of spy agencies which silence the king of the turtles bark back. I'm king and you're only a turtle named Mac. You stay in your place while I sit here and rule. I'm king of a cow and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house and a bush and a cat. But that isn't all. I'll do better than that. My throne shall be higher, his royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles. I want about 200. <laughs> turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed, and the turtles way down in the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came, they obeyed. From all over the pond, they came swimming by dozens, whole families of turtles with uncles and cousins, and all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac. One after another, they climbed up the stack. Then Urgel the turtle was perched up so high he could see 40 miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray, shouted Yertle, I'm king of the trees, I'm king of the birds, and I'm king of the bees. I'm king of the butterflies, king of the air, on me, what a throne, what a wonderful chair. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. Then again, from below, in the great heavy stack, came a groan from that plain little turtle named Mac. Your Majesty, please, I don't like to complain, but down here below we are feeling great pain. I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down at the bottom we too should have rights. We turtles can't stand it. Our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food. We are starving, groaned Mac. The history of the federal government of the United States of America is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. Our federal government has declared absolute immunity for all official acts of the president. Our federal government has erected a multitude of offices and sent forth swarms of officers to harass our turtles and eat out their substance. Our federal government has created a large and unknown number of spy agencies which spy upon our turtles and indeed upon all of the turtles of the world. Our federal government harasses and incarcerates turtles for peaceful, voluntary, nonviolent behavior. Our federal government detains turtles indefinitely without trial or charges. The truest measure of the size and oppression of our federal government is its total spending, which reflects the grand sum of resources taken by force from each and every and all of the turtles. Our federal government spends more and more, and to do so it taxes more and more, and borrows more and more, and inflates more and more, with no limit to its voracious appetite. You hush up your mouth, howled the mighty King Yurgle. You've no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. I rule from the clouds over land, over sea. There's nothing, no, nothing that's higher than me. 
But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise up over his head in the darkening skies. What's that, snorted Yertle? Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? I shall not allow it. I'll go higher still. I'll build my throne higher. I can and I will. I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about five thousand six hundred and seven. But as Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and started to order and give the command, that plain little turtle below in the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, decided she'd taken enough, and she had. And that plain little lass got a little bit mad, and that plain little Mac did a plain little thing. She burned our federal government is a cowardly, rotten, degraded, mischievous, rotten, rotten, and unspeakably nasty nest of dynastic departments with brainless battalions of bookkeeping, pencil sharpening strumpets and whole regiments of ignorant, characterless, chuckle-headed consuls who will, in their own good time, bring destruction upon this broad-shouldered fabric of ours. Therefore, I, a peaceful turtle, by the authority inherent in peaceful turtles everywhere, do solemnly publish and declare that I am, and of right ought to be, a free and independent turtle. I am absolved from all allegiance to the federal government of the United States of America. All political connection between me and that government is and ought to be totally dissolved. As a free and independent turtle, I have the right to live my life in peace and to do all other acts and things that an independent turtle may of right do. Burped, and her burp shook the throne of the king. And Yertle the turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air and the birds and the bees, the king of a house and a cow and a mule, well, that was the end of the turtle king's rule. For Yertle, the king of all Salamasan, fell off his high throne and fell plunk in the pond. And today the great Yertle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud. That is all he can see. And the turtles, of course, all the turtles are free. As turtles, and maybe all creatures should be. for decades now, and Karen can remember back in 2001, I think, when we got started, when she made this amazing, nice-fitting vest. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I've worked on this, and I've gone through thousands of versions of a U.S. Constitution, and now I rented a P.O. box in Burlingame, and I created a postcard so I can take suggestions of possible rules of a revised U.S. Constitution. I think it's very important we revise it because we love our heritage. We love things about our Constitution. And maybe we can revise it and improve it. So I was thinking, we have fundamentally too many rules 
let's limit it to 26 rules, alpha beta constitution, the alphabet of rules, 26, and that is the basis. And I've come up with some, but they're not set in stone. Um, if you are willing to accept this homework assignment, and I do want to, I do want your wonderful, amazing, beautiful ideas, then all you got to do is write your rules in and pop it in a mailbox. Oops. They're just racing away. So, if you would like, here is a copy of the Alpha Beta Constitution. Actually, on the back, it's got the text of the preamble, minus, of course, most of the Dr. Seuss. So, <laughs> if anyone would like that homework assignment, I thrill me.